Hey, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Disgustingly Resilient Podcast and another episode of Infection Critical where we look at the best Death Guard lists that are performing in the current meta. So today we're going to take a little bit of a, a skew away from the sort of normal way we do this. Um, an event happened recently um, called the Alpine Cup in which the top 10 featured a three Death Guard players, which is incredible. Um, and it's really cool because that means like Death Guard are obviously doing well at this event. So we're going to take a look at those three specifically today. But we're also going to take a look at where they hit that first loss and what it is that is potentially keeping Death Guard from going to that full 5 and 0 status. So just a quick reminder, if you do enjoy the content, please feel free to leave a like and a subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Um, consider becoming a Plague Marine, you get access to our Discord, get to join in the giveaways, all sorts of good stuff like that and obviously end up Plague Surgery. So, just a very quick brief one, it's a weekly video this series, looking at the best Death Guard performing list of the week, in this case we're looking at a specific event. We normally analyse the list and the units, which we're still going to do. We normally analyse every single match that person has, now because we're looking at three lists today, we're not going to be doing that, we're going to be looking at the list that they lost to. And then, if possible, I will try and reach out to the player, which fortunately I've had the chance here. Um, but I have had one of them on the show before, so I will uh, make sure there's a link at the end of the video to go and see the interview with that specific player, which is Liam. Um, and he's an amazing player, plays uh, incredibly well, plays at like a world championship level. So, really cool to see him back on Death Guard. So, the Castle Cup singles event was a 64-player event uh, that was over five rounds. And we, like I said, we managed to get three Death Guard lists in the top ten. Each of them had a 4-1 record, losing at various stages of the event, but then managing to get four wins regardless. Um, so our plan is to look at the lists, and then look at the loss that they got, and see if there's any um, any correlation between the thing that basically prevented them from reaching that final uh, verdict, that final uh, podium, sorry. Um, but what we're noticing is that Death Guard is still a good army, but we just seem to struggle to seal the deal. And as you may notice we go through here, there's, there's kind of a... Of a of a theme of what it is that is making us struggle to seal that deal. So, first up, we've got Liam VSL. So, Liam, uh, again, he's been on the channel before, incredibly skilled player, plays for the World Championships, um, I think it was Team Belgium he plays for. Um, and he rocks Death Guard back in the day, he kind of made the original Death Guard list with like the triple um, biologist pooch fire buses, um, and He's back again on Death Guard, trying them out once again. Now, he has pivoted away from his heavy Plague Marine build. That kind of was his staple, uh, was to bring, like, three Rhinos for Plague Marines, backed up by, like, PBCs, and that was kind of, like, the go-to build at the time. Now, he's gone away from that. As you can see, he's got still got one 10-man Plague Marine squad in his signature mixed loadout. He always prefers the mixed loadout. Again, he talks about that in the interview, so check that out if you like it. Um... So he has one squad of them with the Biological Future Fire and the Foul Blight Spawn. So the Fights first and the uh, Lethal Crits Fives, which is really nice. And the Free Grenade. But he's also rocking Mortarion, which this is something he didn't normally used to bring. But um, we'll get into why in a second. But Big Marty is here. Then we've got two units of Cultists. Cultists just great. Scoring, screening, uh, holding home, whatever you need them to do. So really, it's pretty standard to see Cultists of at least one unit. Usually two if preferable. Three Predator Destructors, so this is where he goes heavy on the mech now. We've got three Predator Destructors, three Fetid Bloat Drones, and three Plague Burst Crawls. I'm pretty sure there's also a Rhino in here. I may have forgot to put it on the list, um, which is my fault. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a Rhino. There might not be. Maybe he's gone crazy. Someone will have to point it up and <laughs> confirm that one. Um, but he's got all Spitters on the Plague Burst Crawlers and the Bloat Drones as well. Uh, this is okay because obviously he's got the three, he's got the six last cannons on the Predators to make up for that. But this means that his army has a lot of anti-infantry flamers and all of it's on the two up. So it's incredibly powerful into like quite heavy infantry metas, which we kind of see at the moment due to the terrain being quite dense. So no allies in this one as well. So if you are adamantly against allies like I normally am, it's a very cool list. Now, unfortunately, this isn't a list that I'll do well with. I know that personally. I'm just not good at vehicle spam. Uh, and this is a lot of holes. We're looking at nine vehicles plus Mortarion. So we are leaning on that skew of our vehicle's toughness. And this is a, a list that can, against certain matchups, really just run at them. You're going to have three Plague Burst Crawls all getting cover. Three Bloat Drones all going to be trying to get in cover and pushing up with Mortarion. So that entire, uh, that entire brick of an army is going to push towards an opponent, put a lot of pressure on. The Predator Destructor is almost at like a second wave holding angles and taking shots where they can. If your opponent exposes themselves to deal with the pressure of the Plague Bus Crawlers, the Drones and Mortarion, the Predators can obviously then just jump out, take and return fire and basically counter trade stuff. And you've still got Cultists for doing early, early game, you know, objective secondaries 
and the big Plague Marine Fight First brick is there because it is still a really cool tool to use. Uh, even though I do say it's very expensive, I still take one myself because having a big Fight First brick is sometimes enough to disincentivize an opponent from trying to attack a certain area of the board, which means that you're free to focus on other areas. Now, Liam's obviously an incredible player and knows how to play this list. It's a very co close list to what he took to, oh well, what French team, for example, um, was taken to um, WTC. So a lot of Plague Burst, Crawler, um, sort of like pressure builds. Um, now, he did obviously lose one round, so he went 4-1, and, and his loss was to Grey Knights. And he was 9-11, to 11, so very, very close on the scoring there. But he did lose to it, and unfortunately that's with three Dread Knights, two, big, two Librarians, Drago and two Terminator Bombs and then supporting stuff like Strike Squads and Interceptor Squads. So, we've already got one loss to that high mobility, uppy downy matchup. And that is the thing that I still, I don't believe is the thing that is stopping Death Guard hitting 5 0s at the moment. We really struggle to deal with the uppy downies. And Grey Knights is a prime example of an army that upper downs. So, losing to Grey Knights here, I'm not too surprised. A very close score. So, Liam probably just trying to put himself onto the objectives put pressure onto the Grey Knights and basically say to the Grey Knights, I'm going to stand on objectives, I'm tough, you don't have the greatest killing power, uh, try and deal with me. And the Grey Knights probably danced around a bit, scored a bit, but unfortunately it also does look like he managed to unfortunately get pipped by just over five points. Um, but it does go again to back up the evidence that Death Guard is a good army, but the problem is that it runs into matchups you're just going to really struggle in because this is one of the best plays in the world and unfortunately did lose to that uppy downy army so it makes me obviously sit here like not the best players in the world uh, and think that the uppy down is going to be an even more of a horrible matchup for those people there but incredible performance by Liam there still you know fantastic a really cool list pure death guard which is awesome to see heavy mechanized vehicle skew so that, that's the kind of thing for you please uh, give it a try but do remember you have to play this quite aggressively this is not a you can play a bit of sit back with the play bus calls and just use the indirect but this is more or less that wants to use those toughness stats the two up saves the invulns the toughness 10 getting that cover and putting pressure on your opponent to make something happen okay so next up we got i think it, i'm gonna butcher your names i'm sorry fellas and um, we're gonna guess it's Wojtek Sizdeski. Um, I hope that's okay, bud. I'm sorry, but but he's running a heavy mechanized list again So leaning on the heavy mech side of it. So lots of vehicles, but he's opted to bring brigands instead this time So we've got typhus uh, notably typhus was missing from Liam's list So is that a question of just couldn't fit him in for the points or is that an active decision that he doesn't want typhus? I'm more gonna err on the side of him just not having the points to fit it in um, because Typhus is incredible and I'm pretty sure he likes Typhus as well. Um, but again, I could I could potentially be wrong on that. Maybe it was a given decision, but given how Typhus kind of auto-include for most Death Guard lists, I imagine it was more he couldn't fit him in anywhere. Because um, I don't think he, he couldn't lose a Bloat Drone for Typhus because, again, the Bloat Drone is the thing that supplements the pressure build and the skew aspect. Putting Typhus in there would take away from that. Um, so, But over here we have got Typhus. Tallyman, who's probably just going to be holding home, uh, trying to score some CP. Mortarian showing up once again. Um, we've got a Death Guard Terminator Sorcerer, so we're going for a bit of defensive play and obviously got the Casino Cannon. So having access to minus one damage on a two up every turn in close combat is going to be real nice for that Death Shroud Terminator Brick, which I imagine he's going to be going with. Three squads of 10 cultists, so again, lots of scoring trash stops to go alongside the heavy mechanized build. So he's going to make sure he can still be scoring his secondaries, which is really cool. Um, we've got three Predator Destructors again, so two lists rocking triple Predator Destructors, again, all last cannons. Um, so that long range shooting firepower, they aren't the best things in the world, but they're super cheap and they put out a lot of shots and they have a quite good rule and synergy with our extra AP Contagion anyway. Getting that all cannon up to AP3 quite easily, which is really nice to have it at. Um, two bloat drones opting for flesh mowers this time, so this one doesn't have the sort of anti-infantry flamer skew that the other list does. But once again, they're there, they can put pressure on. Blow drones for 90 points are just really good for just trading, making your opponent have to expose stuff, for which then your predators or your war dogs in this case can also swing back on and pick up in retaliation. And chances are, not many things in the game that can kill blow drones are 90 points or less. So chances are you make an up trade on that, which is obviously the entire point of them. Um, now, we have got triple brigands. Brigands are just an amazing shooting platform, even I have to admit I've started playing with them because um, I feel kind of forced to, but still, they are incredibly good. Ballistic skill 2 on all the weapons is, makes them quite reliable. The minus 1 toughness actually is important for their melt of spear because it gets them to uh, break points, especially against stuff like land raiders, 2 for 12, down to 11. It's basically akin to plus 1 to wound. 
and an actual synergy with their own additional AP increase, which can get you to Gatling Gun on th AP3, and your Melter can get up to AP6, um, which is comical to say. <laughs> so, once again, a sort of mechanized heavy list. This one does also bring a six-man Death Shroud Terminator brick. Again, can have the Death Guard, Shroud, the Death Guard Terminator Sorcerer in there, which is going to give them the minus one damage, make them real nice and tough. So this is the kind of list that can... Do a little bit of trading, a little bit of skirmishing, but then it can have that turn where it kind of just exposes all of its um, list. Again, if someone wants to try and trade into Mortarion, you have a lot of shooting firepower that you're pre presenting to your opponent with the three Predators, the three Brigands. That's a lot of shooting output for anyone that tries to engage on your Terminators or Mortarion, for example. So, very, very heavy on shooting. Not too much melee. It's kind of just Death Shroud here, the Flesh Mowers and Mortarion. No Plague Marine Brick. So, potentially could be a bit worried about being... Pushed in by something like a World Eaters. But again, looking back, the fella has made sure to bring three squads of ten cultists to make sure that he can screen that out and be quite safe. Now, his one loss was to Necron Hypercrypt. Once again, at a 9 to 11 score. Um, unfortunately, again, the Uppy Downy, it's just, it just keeps getting us. And this is an awful Uppy Downy. Triple Monolith, Silent King, with lots of MSU infantry and scoring. I've played against Dual Monolith, Double Doomsday Arc, Silent King. And I think that's probably stronger because Doomsday Arc is so annoying. But Triple Monolith just seems like an absolute nightmare to deal with. Toughness 13 means we only bring them to 12s. So our last cannons and our Predators are only wounded on 4s. Our Brigands Thermal Spirit are still only wounded on 4s. They have an on-demand 4 plus invulnerable. And they're rocking Death Rays on all of them. So these things teleport in every turn. They're already hard for us to kill one of them. Especially when they're putting the 4-up invulnerable on it. And now someone's bought 3 of them. The Silent King is here so you can't use any defensive stratagems against them. Or, he can just give them real ones to hit and wound, which makes them far more reliable. Um, as well as him being quite a scary shooting platform himself, he's got some flat six damage shots. And he also has some pretty nasty melee as well. All of this is teleporting every turn. And again, this is the problem. We are playing an honest army versus armies that are literally picking up. So, in this, if, if this fella took the enhancement, which lets you put four units into reserves, he could technically pick up three monoliths and Silent King in one turn that is over 1000 points of his army basically that you can just pick up in a turn and redeploy anywhere and the counter to these kind of lists is having stuff with like loan up or 12 inch deep strike denial but we don't have any access to that at all which is really shit i won't lie it sucks we lack the tools to deal with this kind of thing so it's unfortunate again to see such a cool list do really well and perform strong until it ran into that uppy downy matchup he fought like absolute hell as you can see that score is super close but unfortunately, once again, it's just un can't keep up to the pace of Uppy Down here. Again, we're an army that moves very slow in general. And we're going to get picked off at angles that we can't possibly, you know, cover all the time. So, um, unfortunate loss there and unfortunate loss to Hypercrypt. But an excellent list and an excellent performance once again. So, congratulations, mate. So, going into the last list here, we've got a more Plague Marine heavy build. So, we've got, uh, again, support by Brigands. Uh, so, this is Ben Hacklander. Uh, he's gone for the full three um, full squads of Biologist Putrefy at Foul Flight Spawn supported. Now, he does have two squads of 10 mans Plague Marines, and he's got one squad of five mans. So he hasn't committed to the three 10 man, um, but each of these does also have a Rhino of their own. For some reason, I've just forgot to write Rhinos down today, but these do have Rhinos. I 100% know these ones do. <laughs> um, so three Rhinos. Uh, Typhus, again, rocking solo in this list, which is kind of standard. He's also brought a Malignant Playcaster, so um, I'm going to guess that's going to ride around in the 5-man, um, with the 5-man and the fire, Far White on the Biology Future Fire, because you'll have, once you deploy the 5-man, who can go and do stuff, do grenade strats, you know, fight first somewhere, you can keep the Malignant Playcaster in the Rhino and have it like a half a mini Plague Bus rocking around, putting some shots out. Um, so that's quite nice, turns into like a little sort of pseudo Razorback, um, obviously would prefer to have the second one in there, but again, can't have too many points in the Rhino. He's also got one squad of 10 Death Guard Cultists, and oh by the way, he's got Mixed Melter, Spewers, and Heavy Plague Weapons, so the mixed loadout that Liam VSL prefers and that I prefer. Again, just lets you deal with more targets at the same time. You don't just commit to being pure melee or pure shooting, it just lets you be able to crack transports and still have a follow-up charge that hits real hard. And now the Death Guard Cultists, once again there, always bring at least one unit. Scout can be super important for pushing out screens, also just lets you hold home with something real cheap. Um, so, nice choice there. Two more Predator Destructors, so each of these lists rocking 
three to three and two predator structures so these guys seem to pop up in almost every list makes me thinking that maybe i should get the other two painted and start running three myself uh, but this one's also going for the triple brigand as well so this one has a lot more melee staging so this is definitely more of a staging list um, these rhinos want to get in good spots on the board and once the rhinos are in position the plague marines are going to disembark and the predators are sort of there to keep your opponent humble sort of stop them getting aggressive onto you because you've got a lot of firepower and once your marines get out and sort of like start charging and engaging anything that sort of wants to answer them or create screens for them the brigands and the predators themselves can sort of put um, firepower into to deal with them the brigands obviously also bring some nice anti-tank Plague Marines can kill stuff in close combat or with Melter Gun Lucky Shots, but you're more reliable is to bring something like a Brigand so they can pop transports, help you guys get in, um, and basically enable the Plague Marines to do their job. So the Plague Marines take the midboard, the Brigands sort of need to stay a bit closer due to their range limitations being 24, but the Predator Destructors can sort of like keep at your back, keep at your long angles, and keep those long lanes of fire covered, because the last thing you want to do is not have something that can cover that, and then the opponent puts a really nasty shooting piece on that long angle and it's going to be really hard for you to interact with that all game um now unfortunately ben's loss was to liam vsl uh, which is unlucky mate you went against one of the best players in the world in that one so that is and in round one as well so super unlucky but to bounce back from a loss get four wins is still incredible uh, unfortunately we can't learn anything from this i was kind of hoping this would also be another uppy downy loss but again to lose to our own kind it happens no one likes the mirror but unfortunately it does happen so another really cool list that seemed to do really well i would have loved to have seen what happened if the mirror didn't happen in the first round how far you could have got undefeated and then what would it would have been that potentially took you down um but a really cool list and it's nice to see um plague marines sort of still being used um even despite their cost increase on the characters they're still putting up a good performance when you back it up with specific units that are going to bring some ranged firepower to support them so Looking at these three, um, I've got three very cool lists. So if you like a lot of Plague Marines and, and sort of mechanized transport play, you can go with Ben's list. If you want a more mechanized version of like actual firepower mechanization and you want to bring some Death Shroud with some Brigand support, you could bring Votex. Uh, obviously, if you don't want to bring allies, you could potentially swap the Brigands out for some other things. Um, maybe another Bloat Drone and like two PBCs potentially. The problem obviously being that pbcs are quite expensive but then again at that point you better probably just play in liam's list because he's gone for the pure death guard there um but doesn't have any terminators so maybe you can make some weird homunculus um <laughs> creation from both these lists being put together but three super cool lists unfortunately two of them losing out on those top five and oh spots to both uppy downy armies so unfortunately it looks like that is kind of the thing that is keeping death guard down at the moment and that's what i've said from the start it's not Death Guard is bad, it's not a Death Guard is weak at the moment, it is Death Guard is a good army, but unfortunately it's an honest army in a meta that is currently kind of dominated by dishonest armies that don't want to play the usual rules and then get to uppy down or move ridiculous like sisters moving like 28 inches castigates and still shooting. Like, that is not an honest army, that is a I can do bullshit. <laughs> um, but it is what it is and we've got hopefully a data slate coming soon. Hopefully that means we should see some things. So I'm just going to quickly cross. Hopefully that means we should see some changes as well, which would be really nice to see. Maybe get a bit of nerfs to the other armies, which I think is what we need to see more than buffs to ourselves. Um, they've got to be careful of buffing us because we might become oppressive to the mid table armies that we do have good games into. But right now, all I want to see from that is maybe the hyper crypt get toned down, like one lifts going up in points, stuff like that, and sisters... Uh, do also need a bit of a, of a slap because they're just kind of like nuts anyway but but yeah overall cool to see uh really cool list there and um, so again people hope you enjoyed this one three cool lists for you there to take away and sort of like maybe play around with maybe modify a bit or maybe just run them straight because again these guys clearly know what they're doing they're getting the good results in so that's really cool to see I'm at London this weekend, hopefully going to put in some good results myself, maybe get a cheeky 4-1 again, that is the goal, I'm going to pray for that, after 3-2 at Leeds I'm very upset, so I'm, I'm raring to go on my new list, um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening guys, again, if you want to check out any extra like battle reports, or if you want to see people like teach how to play the game, check out Vanguard Tactics and their Death Guard coach, and part of their team, um, wonderful lot, obviously prioritise sportsmanship over anything, but they have a right good laugh and they can teach a lot of good things, so always check them out. If you're thinking of buying anything in the UK, check out Element Games, affiliate link in the description below. Um, use our link and you basically give us a bit of kickback and you get a little bit of crystals as well, which is awesome. Everybody wins. 
and Saltire Games on the far left there, I'll let you left for you guys, um, <laughs> who, who basically produce um, gaming aids, so Death Guard themed ones with our specific faction logo, these stuff like Deep Strike markers, Contagion Range markers, Objective markers, so go check those guys out, the Etsy link is in the description again below, promo code NURGLE will get you 10% off your order and let them know that we sent you. And last but not least, YouTube members, again, thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. If you do enjoy it, consider becoming a member. You get access to our Discord, Plague Surgery, all the good little things and the giveaways that we do, and you get to join an awesome community, which is sweet. But if all else fails, thank you to you for just tuning in today, watching this video, and hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you got some new list ideas, and hopefully you are still enjoying your Death Guard very much. For now, everybody, take care of yourselves, stay rotten, and I'll catch you all on the next episode. See you later.